thank you guys for being here. I know this is the vampire session of the day. It's the second last one I just noticed on the schedule. So I appreciate your patience, your diligence, especially when the weather is so nice outside to be here. Um, so before I fully dive into what we're doing, do I have a quick show of hands of, um, do you guys know who Signum is? Uh, not so many. All right, cool. So I'll give you a very quick overview of uh, who Signum is first, and then I can tell you what we're doing with CDFI. So Signum is the world's first uh, digital asset bank. It's founded in Switzerland and in Singapore. We have uh, now 250 employees, and we were built with a digital asset focus. So we started, the, the concept began back in 2016-17, where we worked with Finma to explain how we can actually regulate digital assets in existing regulatory frameworks. And we received our banking license two years later, in 2019. And uh, today, in 2024, we have over 4 billion in assets in custody, 1,800 clients around the world and clients in 70 countries. And we like to say basically everywhere except America. <laughs> um, but we're also backed by some of the bigger names in the industry, like Animoca Brands, Bitrock, and so on. As a bank, you are typically also get you know, your classic IBAN accounts in Swiss franc, US dollar, um, Swiss, uh, Swiss franc, US dollar, Sing dollar, and uh, euros. But also, you can buy, sell, trade all of your crypto assets directly from your e-banking portal. You can stake your assets. We're an institutional-grade custody provider, so that means that you, know, you really know that your assets are safe and regulated by, the, by FINMA here in Switzerland. And that's, that's interesting, right? It's cool that there's a bank that gives you access to crypto. Like, well done. But we'll get to the good stuff, I promise. Uh, we're regulated in Switzerland, Singapore, Luxembourg, and UAE, and um, what I really like to emphasize is what does it mean to be regulated? So you have lots of players in the space that say that they are regulated financial institutions, but being a fully licensed bank means that all of your crypto assets stay off balance sheet, and that means that when you know, things go absolutely upside down, um, if there's a bankruptcy event, if there's a liquidation event, any of these things, with Signum, uh, all of your assets are simply transferred back to you, you returned your private keys, there is no counterparty risk, which is usually the biggest concern with banks and also with working with um, custodial institutions, as we saw in 2022. So with these other institutions, it, they're typically quite easy to set up, but uh, tents that are quick to set up don't really do well in stormy weather. And that's why it's still important to have fully regulated players like Signum in the space. So all the things I talked about so far was, yeah, yeah, bank, cool to have a bank. What do we do with DeFi? First, the overview, right? So we've got um, CFI providers, very, very categorically different from what all the DeFi providers in the space do. The DeFi ones are exciting, they're cool, they have lots of new opportunities. On the CFI side, um, they have easier access, maybe there's some partially regulated, um, but there is still a lot to be uh, discovered, I think, in the integration of both of these sectors. So at Signum, we talk a lot about CDFI, which is really embracing the innovation of DeFi, but doing so within the regulated frameworks of the traditional world. And that means honoring you know, the rules of KYC, the rules of AML, and making sure that whatever we're doing, as we innovate, we're not breaking things. We, at Signum, we say um, the future has heritage. And that is, we believe in this like, great, you know, super sovereign, really well uh, individualized world of finance, but the direction there is from where we are today, and that means we have to move with care and, with, and taking the institutions with us. So on the DeFi side, of course, it's really permissionless. It's inclusive. Anybody can go on there, do whatever they want. They've got flexible, composable money Legos. But there are these risks that you don't really know who your counterparties are a lot of the time. And there is the risk of key loss. You know, there is no fail safe. On the CeFi side, it's KYC, it's permissionless, and so on. But also, it's very slow. I mean, everybody in this room knows that there's a lot that the traditional world can gain from DeFi. But the truth is, if you want the institutions to come, if you want the institutions to play, you've got to bring in these safeguards that make it safe for them to do so. So how do we do this? 
When I was building this presentation, I kind of went through the bank. I went to all the departments and said, hey, guys, give me, give me a good story. What are, we, what are all the things we're doing? And the truth is, I have probably, I don't know, another 20 slides or so, but, and I don't think I'm going to be able to cover all of them. So we're not a huge number in this room, so I would basically encourage you to jump in and ask me if there's something that pops up along the way that you think is interesting, if there's something more you want to know, because then I can spend more time on the stuff that actually is um, interesting to you all. So the first one, the most obvious one probably is ecosystem support. So uh, we work with network security and governance for a whole bunch of protocols, which is running their validator nodes, running governance for them. Um, and we do this through our venture arm. Then we have uh, Signum Rise, which is really designed to support younger players in the space, which is uh, help them with their fundraising, help them with um, connections within the ecosystem, especially when you're starting out. It can be quite challenging. And so there's a specific arm dedicated to just supporting this ecosystem. And then the third is, of course, uh, the clients of the bank where you get access to banking services. So on the first leg, you've got, you know, um, uh, Definity, Cosmos, ZK Sync, Clayton, these are all networks that we work with, that we run validator nodes for, and um, then in turn also support their ecosystems at the bank. And with our RISE initiative, so there's, of course, you get a bank account, which is great. Um, you get to fundraise in a compliant way, which is actually quite challenging because in many parts of the world, there isn't a lot of clarity around what you really need to be doing to make sure that you're being compliant. And so when you work with the bank at the outset, you already know that um, in the future, whenever regulation does come, you can always point back and say, hey, look, we started on the right foot. We, were, we wanted to be compliant, and we worked with the most <laughs> regulated player in the space to ensure this. And then, like I said, on the community side, matchmaking with other VCs, um, working with our social media, coming on a podcast. Um, we have demo days and VC days. So there's all these ways to encourage smaller, younger startups in the space to grow and gain visibility and credibility from being associated with a bank like us. Um, regulated staking solutions. This, again, seems kind of, um, yeah, anybody can stake assets, you know, what's the big deal? But actually, imagine doing this inside your own banking UI. So logging into a UBS portal, maybe there's Bitcoin there, you can buy some Bitcoin, great, but imagine being able to just stake your Ethereum and then get a tax statement at the end of the year on what your, reward, your taxation is on the rewards that you've um, gained. And doing all of this through a really simple, easy user interface and knowing that it's from a regulated banking provider. So today we offer Ethereum, Cardano, Definity, Tessos, and Cosmos, but this list is always growing. So those are kind of like the low-hanging fruit, right? What else are we doing? So um, in the asset management space, I talked about this earlier on the panel that I was on, we really were looking at how to expand our offering. So the first thing with asset management is, of course, like, you know, buy a single token, great. Now what? Pooled investment solutions. Okay, you can bring a couple of things together, put a strategy on top of it, then you've got uh, an interesting product, perhaps. Then you want to create the next level, which is an institutional-grade solution for uh, larger players to also participate in the crypto space. All of these things are off-chain. These are just banking products. So we said we also need to build something that's happening on-chain and how do we and leverage kind of the power of crypto in the assets that are also crypto. And so in case it wasn't clear <laughs> why are on-chain solutions uh, important or interesting, um, they're super scalable, there's a lot of speed, uh, increase in speed, um, the amount of oversight, or not oversight, but the amount of man or person hours dedicated to managing all of this is a lot lesser. And for the, last, for the individual who's actually doing the investment, you get a lot more personalization in the actual assets that you're investing in. So it gives you this, uh, this level of individualization on investment strategy that typically would not have been possible unless you are you know, an ultra high net worth individual or something like this. But when you're doing this on chain and doing it through a bank, suddenly a lot of these things become options for you as well. And of course, uh, increased transparency. So at the end of the day, you can always log on, see on chain exactly what your nav is, 
um, how your assets are performing. You don't have to wait for the end of the month for an asset manager to generate one specific like, sheet, and then also have to trust that sheet. Here you can see everything on chain, which is fantastic. So we decided to work with uh, Enzyme Finance. Uh, they're based here in Zurich. Uh, they've been around for a while. So when we were looking into the market, looking into what we wanted to do, it was really important to partner with a provider that really prioritizes institutional-grade features. So this includes things like subscription queuing, because we've got a whole bunch of people bringing money in. We can't have them going in one after the other, and that means that everyone gets different value on their trades. So being able to do that in a way that everyone has these individual books, but has them also at an even, uh, with an even trading record. Um, the governance model. How do we make sure that um, everything that's happening on chain is also being governed in a way that doesn't allow rug pulls to happen, doesn't allow the original protocol creators to step in and then change the rules of engagement halfway through? Because we all know that this is still possible. There is a backdoor for a lot of the DeFi protocols out there. And then also ensuring that the market makers that we work with are verified. Because with FINMA, with being a fully regulated institution, this is something that's super challenging. We have to know that the counterparties that we have, even if it is um, you know, happening in, not inside of Signum necessarily, but on um, Enzyme's interface, that the counterparties we work with over there are also verified. So we really got this buy-in from the Enzyme team to work with us on a compliant um, vision. And this is a very high level of uh, what the actual solution looked like. So you can see that the client works with Signum Storage and Signum Score Banking Solution. Then there is a pooled wallet that engages with the Enzyme interface. Enzyme's interface works only with um, a specific market maker that we've pre-vetted and decided and said that is OK. Um, and the Enzyme Governance Council has an owner wallet, but then Signum is also involved in the governance of that. So it eventually creates a solution that enables us to kind of unleash the power of blockchain in a kind of classic asset management solution. Another uh, cool product that we're working on is called Social Recovery. This one's very close to my heart because it's something that I'm personally working on as well. Um, you all probably know, I, I talked about key loss uh, earlier on, but also in the crypto space, there's been a lot of conversation around uh, multi-sig social recovery. So everyone knows that EOAs are quite um, risky as a place to store all of your assets, and so you... Typically, people would need a smart contract wallet, and in that smart contract wallet, like it's nice if I make my mother or my husband or somebody else um, signatories with me, but what says that they're going to be able to actually come in and retrieve my assets should things go really badly? And so there is a role, a role here for institutions to play. You can have your own devices, you can have your family and friends, but there is an important role that institutions need to play, and we believe that Signum, because of where we sit in the ecosystem, is the right sort of person to enter the market and um, offer this solution. So we work with um, SAFE. It's one of the largest multi-sig wallet providers out there. It's um, in development, but this is like a teaser of what the solution looks like. So it begins with identification. I know that a lot of the pure DGEN people feel that, you know, KYC is a problem, but I'm sorry if you're working with a bank, KYC is a part of the story. Get on board. Um, <laughs> but you have to identify yourself. Uh, you subscribe to the service, and then let's say, you know, things go terribly, you lose your, access, you lose your keys. So then you come to Signum, report your loss event, you um, re-identify yourself, we you swap out your keys, and you gain access to your safe account. We had to then design this solution in a way that really um, protects the end user. We didn't want this to be custody. We didn't want this to be confused with custody in any sense because we're not touching the funds at all, right? So this is a kind of example. So let's say Alice, Bob, and Cam have a vault, which is set up as a two of three multi-psych. Uh, Alice and Bob both lose their access. Um, and in this case, they trigger a recovery. Signum steps in and reassigns Alice's wallet to a new wallet, and then Alice can continue to access the vault with Cam because now they have a two of three set up again. 
What have we done in this case is to show that Signum never actually touches the vault. You never touch the funds. We have no contact to the money that's in the vault. And also, we've put in place a buffer. So this means that when you trigger a recovery, um, your whichever uh, notification devices that you've enlisted into the setup get a notification saying, hey, look, something's going on with your safe. Is this something that you wanted or not? And then there's a seven-day period or a 30-day period, depending on what you choose as your setup. But then you can go in and you know, move your assets out if this was not something that you wanted to do. And in that way, Sigrun kind of defines and codes into the actual product distance from the assets. And that's what was really important to us because this is clearly not a custodian setup. So from our side, what are the safeguards we've put in? One is um, split recovery. So within the bank as well, there's the product team, and then there's the banking compliance team, and both of them have to accept a recovery transaction or swap. Um, there's the buffer period that I just talked about, which means that you continue to have on-chain veto rights. You can stop this thing from happening if you don't want it to happen. Um, we're technically limited, so the only thing we can do is swap out your wallet, but we can't touch the funds. We can't increase the number of um, uh, wallet holders, decrease them, none of that. Our capabilities are quite severely limited. Um, we have uh, the identification process, and then in the re-identification process, you are interviewed by a banking officer. Uh, and then depending on the size of your vault, there's a risk-weighted approach to how much more we also do, like whether it's our compliance team, the head of our compliance team, who else gets involved to ensure that this is uh, happening in the right way. And then, of course, because as a bank, we have a lot of oversight in our smart contract and our codes to make sure everything is audited. So if you guys are interested, you can uh, scan this QR code and um, join our waitlist. This product will be coming out, I'm hoping by the 23rd of May, but I will not commit because I'm going to hear from my uh, product owner on Monday. But the plan is 23rd. <laughs> Am I out of time already? Almost. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll talk about this one as my last case. I have two more studies, but I will stop after this one. Uh, you guys might have seen some of the big... Um, Bohoardings around town right now. We're really proud to be working with Post Finance. Signum actually supports the back end for a lot of banks to engage with crypto. So you might have seen, you know, with Bordier, with Societe Generale, PKB, Bison Bank, um, VZ. But also, Post Finance is really exciting because it's a state owned bank. It is 30% of Sig uh, Signum, no, <laughs> Switzerland's population that can now engage with uh, crypto. And you might ask, why? Why would kind of, you know, an old-school state-owned bank want to come on this journey with us? So the story is actually really interesting. Um, in 2020, Post Finance's profits were 129 million. In 2021, they were 223 million. And in 2022, they saw 300 million of assets from their bank being moved to Kraken, to Binance, to OKX, to crypto exchanges. So they knew that their clients were actually interested in this, and if they didn't get on board, of, uh, get on board this wagon, they were going to just lose in the long run. And it was so kind of heartening to see some, to see kind of what you would think of as a bit of an old school bank, to really see the numbers and understand that they have to come on the journey as well. So um, they worked with Signum. I mean, it was a longer journey because, of course, there's a lot of steps and you're going within a large bank like Post Finance. But eventually, um, it was last year that we announced it and this year that it actually went live. And uh, as a Post Finance customer, you basically can buy a lot of crypto and you can do this through Signum. I have more stories to tell, but no. I'm good. How much time do I have? Two, three minutes, cool. <laughs> so I want to talk also about tokenization because we've been doing some really exciting things in this space. Uh, you might have seen uh, Matter Labs, which is, of course, the, 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 the organization of ZK Sync, ZK Sync era, and um, Fidelity, which you, know, you probably also have heard the name of. They decided to tokenize a part of their treasury into the Fidelity multi-market fund and put this on ZK Sync era through Signum. So Matter Labs is known, again, for ZK Sync era. They have about 500 million sitting in their treasury, like through funds that they've raised. Um, Fidelity International has uh, more than 2.9 million customers around the world and has over 770 billion uh, assets under management. And this money market fund in specific that we worked with was, is almost $7 billion uh, deep. 
and Matter Labs to participate in it would normally have to you know, withdraw these assets, make them into fiat, deposit them in the account, which means that A, it's not super transparent because their investors can no longer see where the money is, and B, it's kind of taking value out of the blockchain ecosystem. It's putting it directly in um, TradFi. So what we did was um, issue a token against the investment into the money market fund. So all of these assets continue to be part of the TVL of ZK Sync era. It doesn't move away from there. And what's really important is that for all the people who are part of the ZK ecosystem, they can see this on-chain. They can see on-chain where these assets are, what the positions are, and it really just increases the levels of accountability, of uh, transparency that you have towards your, your ecosystem. And being able to then, for ZK Singh to be accountable for that is, I think, a big step forward for DAOs and DAO treasuries, while still benefiting from traditional financial assets that might be living off-chain. So... Now I will stop. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions for me? Yeah. Uh, do you build your core banking system in house? Uh, no, we have a core banking system that you know the rest of Switzerland is. Both, both. So we have a. Um, there are some uh, protocols that we run in house, some that are external. Um, and then the only thing more to say about this is that this is, these are all like, great stories to tell, but they are not quick things to happen. All of these things are a journey, and Signum is very much on that journey. And uh, thank you for letting me share some of that with you today. Thank you, Ali. Any other questions? I'm happy to... Yeah, if there are other questions, just please wait for the mic. But I think we're good. Thank Super. You. Thank you so much.